performance how did you find the versatility and that oh, outsole that that, that look, 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 look. What's up folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. Hope you are all fit and well out there. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed to the channel to hit that subscribe button, it only takes a second to do and it is completely free, but it's a great way of supporting the channel. But don't forget while you're there to hit that bell icon so you'll be notified when we upload any new content. I'm glad to say we're still here. We survived our first race back since, what, March 2020 on Sunday. The Mud Crew's inaugural Southwest Traverse. We had an epic day out. The weather was incredible. The coast path looked amazing. It was so good to be back out racing again. I'd love to say we just had a joyous day skipping along the coast path, but underprepared, undertrained, and then we definitely had to dig deep at the end and it got pretty challenging in say the last 10 miles. We captured lots of stunning footage out there on such an epic course. So there's gonna be a film coming to the channel very, very soon. I'm just going through hours and hours of footage, but then we'll start editing it, then we'll start putting it together and we'll have it on the channel as soon as we can. So we are back today with our full in-depth review of a shoe that we did our first impressions video on a couple of months ago. I've left a link in the description if you haven't seen that video, it's definitely worth checking out. This was a very much hyped running shoe on its release and it features, yep, you've guessed it, another carbon fiber plate. But the shoe has also been designed to run long distances on a big mix of different terrains. So the shoe that we are giving Run For Adventures review treatment today is Crafts CTM Ultra Carbon. It is a neutral, deep midsole, carbon fiber plated multi-terrain shoe. So let's dive into this review and give you a few facts and figures on this ultra running shoe. The shoe retails in the UK anywhere near 200 pounds up to 225 pounds. It weighs in at 317 grams in a men's UK 9.5 and 240 grams in a women's shoe. It runs off a 10 mil offset and it has a 40 mil stack height on that midsole. It is available in two different colorways for men and for women. So you've got this nice Miami blue color that we got it in, but also it came in the zebra print color on launch. Very cool looking shoe. And when it comes down to sizing, I found the shoe true to size with good width in the toe box. Before we dive into the construction of this shoe, I just wanted to mention, I don't think I've ever heard the word ultra used so many times when it comes to the materials and the construction of a running shoe so obviously we've got the name the craft ctm carbon ultra we've got that ultra carbon plate worked into the midsole the midsole is called the ultra platform and we've got the ultra upper on the shoe and last but not least we've got the ultra track outsole Anybody would think that this shoe's been developed for ultra running. Starting off at the top of the shoe, and we've got this one piece fully engineered mesh ultra upper. That's been designed to be super lightweight, very breathable and comfortable over distance, while providing with a nice secure lockdown with this anatomical racing fit. We've got quite a stripped back gusseted tongue in the shoe, so not a lot of padding there, but it has got some extra perforations for a bit of added breathability. Also, pretty minimal when it comes to the heel up and the ankle collar so it's um, pretty soft it's not carrying a lot of pad in there so it gives you that nice sort of lightweight lockdown feel and to finish the construction of the upper off we've got some overlays that carry on around the heel of the shoe and work their way through to cover the eyelets where the laces go through just for a bit of added durability working down to the ultra platform midsole and craft have used their vault foam cushioning in that midsole so that is a lightweight eva based foam that's there to deliver constant propulsion over long periods of time but also 
also high levels of energy return and durability. Like a lot of running shoes these days, the shoe has quite an aggressive rock geometry in that midsole to aid with running efficiency and economy over long distances. Worked into that ultra platform is Kraft's ultra carbon fiber plate. Now, you're probably wondering, how did I know that? Well, Kraft have actually written it on the side of the shoe there, just in case you didn't realize. To be honest, I'm sure the name of the shoe probably gives it away. But this is no ordinary plate in the midsole, it is Kraft's tuned carbon fiber plate to offer higher levels of energy return, but it also comes with a precision split in the forefoot to allow the big toe to press independently on the medial side of the plate, creating more torsion to provide a better level of rebound in a big mix of different terrains. Finishing off the Kraft CTM Ultra Carbon is the Ultra Track Out so this is a three-piece lugged traction rubber outsole capable of handling roads and light trail surfaces. It's designed to be lightweight, flexible, and to provide great levels of durability as you put in the miles. So there you have it, some info about the spec and the construction of this carbon-plated multi-terrain shoe from Kraft. But we put some good miles into the shoe over different distances and a big mix of underfoot conditions. So let's go through the things we've really liked about running in the the CTM Ultra Carbon and maybe highlight a few of the things we feel could be slightly tweaked and slightly improved in this shoe but let's start with the good stuff first. I'm a big fan of how the shoe has performed out on the dry compact flat trails and on the road sections that I've run the shoe on and I'd actually be quite happy to run the CTM Ultra Carbon as my road running shoe it's performed so well on the tarmac. I don't think I'd have any issues using this as a road running shoe. This Vol Foam offers you a good level of cushioning, underfoot comfort and high levels of rebound. But what I would say is if you're expecting this ultra platform to be quite soft and squishy, you might be surprised at the firmness. Now for me, that midsole being a bit firmer is a good thing. I don't like the midsole of a running shoe to feel too soft and too squishy, like you're losing energy. This feels like it's providing good levels of energy return and kind of helping you along the way. Also having that slightly firmer platform to run off makes the shoe feel a bit more stable on uneven ground. Don't get me wrong, you've still got this very deep midsole under your foot, so you do lose a bit of ground feel and connection. But if this midsole was very soft, this shoe would be very, very unstable on the more sort of technical trails that we run. Again, another shoe with a slight rocker worked into that midsole geometry, like so many running shoes out there nowadays. But the rocker in the Kraft shoe works really well, and it feels super efficient when you're sort of running those sort of ultra distance paces. So for me, around eight minute, eight 30 minute in. This shoe has felt very easy to run in and I think a lot of that comes down to that geometry worked into the midsole. It just seems to help with that sort of forward running motion. Moving on to the ultra upper and lots of positives here as well. The fabrics used in this shoe, super lightweight and they feel really breathable when you've got the shoe on your foot. Uh, Midfoot lockdown, really, really good in the shoe. This lacing system also keeps you locked down. Even on my longer sort of 20 mile run in the shoe, these laces didn't come loose. I didn't start slipping around in the shoe. I didn't have to stop and retighten those laces. So that upper gives you a really good midfoot hold. The upper is pretty stripped back when it comes down to padding and structure, and that includes the heel cup of the shoe. There's not a lot of padding around that heel collar or in the heel cup, and there's not a lot of structure there either. So I can literally push that heel straight back down into the shoe very, very easily. This sometimes has caused me issues in the past with sort of heel lift and heel slippage. That's not the case in the CTM Ultra Carbon. In fact, it is the complete opposite. That heel has felt super comfortable and I felt really well held in the back end of the shoe. Last but not least is the popcorn footbeds that you get within the shoe. So if I just hold that up, you might be able to see that a bit better on the camera. And you're probably thinking, now where have I seen that before? And yep, it looks identical to the footbeds that are in Innovate's Trailfly Ultra G 300 Max, which I also loved in that shoe. Um, it'd be really interesting to know whose tech this is, who came up with it first? Is it Innovates, is it Crafts? Or do another brand make it and just lots of brands are starting to use these footbeds in their shoes? If you know where these are made or who makes them, let us know in the comments below. But a big fan of this footbed, it, it makes the shoe feel very plush underfoot 
but it also feels like it's got really good levels of sort of energy return. So it feels like it's giving you a little bit of extra spring in your step. So great little feature in the craft shoe, the popcorn footbed. So lots of positives when it comes to that ultra platform midsole and that ultra upper on the CTM Ultra Carbon. But I feel there is still a few things that could be slightly changed, slightly tweaked, just to give this running shoe a better all round performance. The first thing comes down to weight and in particular balance. By balanced I mean, I've run in lots of shoes over the years that when you put them on the scales they're quite heavy but when you get running out in the shoe the shoe feels a lot lighter than it physically is and I think a lot of that comes down to the balance of the upper and the midsole. Unfortunately that's not really the case in this shoe so with this upper being so lightweight the 300 grams plus of this shoe is pretty much all in the midsole construction. So I think if Kraft could shave a few grams off of that midsole, it would just make this CTM Ultra Carbon a lot more balanced when you're out there running. And I think this will really help, especially when it comes to responsiveness on your shorter, quicker runs. Like I mentioned earlier in the review, when it comes to this Ultra Upper, it's pretty stripped back when it comes to padding and structure. It worked really well in the heel cup of the shoe, but for me, not so well when it comes to that gusseted tongue in the shoe. The tongue holds your midfoot really well. I love the perforations in it for extra breathability, but I feel with this shoe being sort of pitched to that ultra distance running, for me, a little bit more padding in that tongue would have been good. Towards the end of the 20 mile run I did in the shoe, I did start to feel a bit of pressure build up from those laces on the top of my foot. I think if I had to do an extra 20, 30, 40 miles, then that pressure through that tongue might have become an issue. So a few things I feel could be slightly improved with some subtle tweaking of the shoe, but all in all, I've really enjoyed the miles and the time I've spent in this shoe, out on the trails, running the road sections, but we've reached that time in the review where we need to dish out some points for the CTM Ultra Carbon. So let's dive into the scoring and let's start with the price first. With the crazy prices for carbon plated running shoes these days, it's really hard to give this type of shoe a high score when it comes down to price. And the CTM Carbon Ultra is no exception. At around 200 pounds in the UK, it is a very expensive shoe. So unfortunately, it's gonna get marked down for price at Run For Adventure and we're gonna give it a very pricey five out of 10. Moving on to comfort and form and I've really enjoyed my time and the miles I've spent running in the shoe. Uh, I think it really excels at that dry, compact, flat trail road crossover. And I've really enjoyed the ge geometry in that midsole. Feels super efficient. I know Kraft sort of pitched this shoe at running less technical dry trails, but I would still like to see a bit more lug on this outsole. At the end of the day, this shoe is built for sort of ultra running, ultra distances. And when you're running them long distances, you tend to cross over lots of different types of terrain and in the UK we literally can have four seasons in one day so I think a bit more lug on that outsole would make the shoe maybe a bit more versatile especially when it came to UK conditions so when it comes to comfort and performance we're going to score it a 7 out of 10. So that just leaves us durability to be scored and so far so good. The Ultra Upper is holding up really well to the mileage that we've put in the shoe. No early signs of wear. And to be honest, it's a very simplistic, lightweight strip back upper. So I can't see there being any issues when it comes to durability. The same is to be said for the Ultra Track outsole. I've probably run as many road miles as I have trail miles in the shoe and that's what this shoe's designed for. And that outsole is holding up really well to the miles. No early sign of wear at all. So when it comes to the shoe, we're going to score it a well put together 8 out of 10 for durability. So totaling all those points up, the Kraft CTM Ultra Carbon at Run For Adventure scores 20 out of 30. As far as looks goes, I'm actually a big fan of how the Kraft shoe looks, especially in this blue colorway that we got sent. I think it looks really nice contrasting with that white midsole. And I like the fact the shape of the midsole is quite different to anything else on the marketplace. I thought the launch colorway, that zebra print colorway from Kraft was genius and it created lots of hype about the shoe when it was launched. So I know it's subjective, this is just my take on how the shoe looks, but we're gonna give it a big thumbs up for looks at Run For Adventure. As far as comparisons, it's pretty tricky because there's not many carbon plated trail running shoes on the marketplace at the moment. I'm sure we'll see more. I'm not sure that's a great thing. I'm still not convinced we need carbon plated shoes in a trail running environment. I get it on the road. I'm not fully convinced about the trail. I think the North Face 
Flight Series Vective is probably the closest we'll get to it. Again, another trail running shoe that's designed for that sort of ultra distance running, and obviously it's got a carbon plate in the midsole. So I dare say it would give you a similar type of performance to the Craft shoe. But that is a wrap on another review at Run For Adventure. Really hope you enjoyed it, guys. Hope you found it helpful. I have left a link in the description below for Craft if you want to find out any more information about the brand or about this shoe in particular. Please click that link and do so. And get involved, guys. Have you been running in the shoe? How have you found the performance? How have you found the versatility? What do you think about the traction from that outsole? Let us know in the comments below. But guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video. We will see you back on the channel very soon. Thanks for watching, it's always appreciated. And as always, stay safe and keep on running. Oh, oh God, my legs. Oh, almost recovered. <laughs>